next Tuesday will be a very good fight for the Republican Party. But we have to see it through. Finish strong and don't forget just how much damage they've done the country. Run through the line. Sprint through the line. Okay, now let's bring in former governor and congressional candidate in Alaska, Sarah Palin, also a friend of mine, if I may. Governor, thank you for joining us in Studio Awesome. It's, it's terrific to have you. Governor, four days left until the election, um, and the left is on the ropes. They're scared, and they should be. There's a, the red wave is, is real, and it's coming. And it's, not a, it's not a false prediction. But I find it striking. The Wall Street Journal posted something yesterday. I find it very, very interesting that white women are breaking for Republicans in a massive way. They've gone from plus 12 to Democrats to plus 15 in the GOP. That's a 27 percentage point move. What say you about white women in coming back to the GOP? Well, it, it doesn't surprise me. I don't know what uh, the color of somebody's skin has to do with their judgment on the direction that the country's going. But yeah, white suburban women, they're, they're the ones in the grocery store. They're, they're the ones um, out there making sure that their kids are safe, walking to school and getting home. And, and they see that the trajectory that we are on, Eric, in our country, it's not good. It's going down and something has to change. We're not embracing the status quo. We want to change. And that's why you're going to see a change in direction politically in the red wave is coming. Yeah, so let, let's take that down. This is important. White suburban women, suburban women specifically, but white suburban women are the reason Donald Trump was elected in 2016. Make no mistake about it, he had their vote because they wanted something different. He came, he was fresh, he wasn't a politician, he was new. They, they were excited about a, a, a billionaire, a businessman taking over the reins of, of the country, and he won. 2020 was a different story because the left painted Trump as being some sort of harsh, mean, evil type guy, mean tweets and whatnot. Biden took the vote and he won in 2020. Looks like it's moving back towards, as you point out, towards the most important issues for suburban women. When you go to the gas pump, you have to use, you have to you spend 100 bucks to fill up your car. When you go in the grocery aisle, and this one, Sarah, governor, mm -hmm. congresswoman potentially, crime. Talk to us about yeah. crime and how yeah. it affects women's voting. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, white suburban women, most women in general, we're not stupid. And we do see that the Biden and Pelosi policies are creating the havoc that we see across our country, and that includes the problem that we're facing with crime. Uh, when we don't believe from leadership on down in law and justice and law and order, well, that's why we're seeing the problems that we're seeing. And again, white suburban women. Uh, we want to change. We, we want to get back on track and we want safety for our kids. I think of it more as a bunch of mama grizzlies out there looking to, uh, to support and defend that next generation. And we will rear up on our hind legs and we will do anything that we can to defend our cubs, that next generation. That's what you see reflected in the polls, and you will certainly see this on Tuesday, that reflection of a mindset that has changed back to getting our arms around the problems that this country is facing. And we don't want to just talk about the problems. We want solutions, and we expect our leaders to start providing solutions. When they don't do that, when they just make things worse, Eric, we say, fire the bums, let's get some new guys in there. You know, I, you make such a good point, Mama Grizzlies and the Cubs. When you, when you, when you're as a parent, most people in the, in the country are parents or, or have grandchildren or whatever. When you're a parent and you start messing with the kids, all bets are off in the voting booth. And, and let's talk about that for a little bit. You know, kids in school. How about women? How about women not being treated as women, biological women? We don't even know what a biological woman. When these kids are getting CRT thrown down their throats, moms. And, and parents and, and parents of, of school age kids are fighting back. That that is where the, the the rubber is meeting the road in this next 2022 and maybe 24 election. Yeah. Absolutely. These are these are frontline issues for a mom. When we go to say a, a high school um, ball game and we see boys wanting to compete on the girls team against the girls, and we say, wait, something, something's askew with that. No, we don't want that, that to happen. We're actually living what the problem is, and we want to fix the problem. It seems like those politicians and bureaucrats making those decisions that, like, well, can't really define what a girl or a woman is, so, you know, it, yeah, boys, come on and, and compete against the girls, be on their teams. Well, we see it, um, very practically and logically, because again, we're not disconnected from the problem. The bureaucrats, the faceless politicians, and some far off 
bubble, they are disconnected from what the reality of the problem is. We, again, on the front lines, we see it every day. We, we, we feel what the problem is. And more importantly, though, we know what the common sense constitutional solutions are for these problems. And we're going to put our so, foot down and say, no, enough is enough of the problem. But, but, Governor, what happens when the media, what happens when the people, the women of The View, misrepresent and, and, and throw hurl insults at uh, suburban women and conservative women? Take a listen to Sonny Hostin. I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid. Governor. The she should, I mean, I don't know why they don't censor her, maybe even fire her for that comment. What are your thoughts on, on being so uh, egregious against half, literally half the population? Right, and half their audience, too. So I take it back when I suggest that, uh, no, women aren't stupid. Some women are stupid. Women who say things like that, it's downright stupid. Not only, like, consider uh, economically for what she's doing for her show, she is uh, disenfranchising probably half of her viewers. By the way, this is coming from a show where it, it, the the names of these characters, the hosts, Sunny, Joy, I mean, they are the antithesis of bright sunshine and joy, aren't they? Yeah, comparing women to um, cockroaches. As was said earlier on Newsmax, you know, cockroaches, white women. okay, they're impervious, white they're women. indestructible. White women. You white know, she, women. She was very specific, white women. I right. mean, I can't imagine if, if, if Governor Sarah Palin said that same thing about African-American women specifically, you'd, you'd get lit up in the media. Right. But, you know, talk about a get-out-the-boat effort that they are doing for us Keep it up, Sonny. Keep it up, Joyless. That that actually helps us because they kind of shed the light. They're they're exposed for who they really are and how um, disrespecting they are of of women, um, of Americans in general, whom they maybe happen to disagree yeah. with. You know, we teach our children not to talk like that, and yet uh, you know there are these big wigs talking like that, setting examples for a younger generation, and that's really sad. But you know what? Keep it up. We'll take that, especially comparison to cockroaches, because like I say, cockroaches are impervious. They're indestructible, pretty much, aren't they? Really hard to get rid of cockroaches. Uh, making, taking lemons and making lemonade out of it. Very quickly, Governor, uh, there's some rumors or some innuendo Trump might announce for his run for 24, and it may happen as soon as November 14th, a couple of Mondays from now. What are your thoughts? Do you know anything? Uh, right on. I hope he does. And I'm not going to vacillate or, or speak around that issue and pivot off of it. I hope that he does. He was the one who had the guts to take on the rhinos, the Democrats, the lamestream media, the fake news. He did it before. We need him to do it again. Look at his policies, what they did for this country, too. We became energy independent. We didn't see an yeah. inflation rate that is at a 40-year high. All the, all the problems that we're seeing under Biden, uh, because what Biden Biden did on day one in office was undo the good policies that the Trump movement had ushered in. Well, we need more Governor. of that Trump train.